and put it into the side base database. And then when the trainers want to have that information, they have to make connections to the database, retrieve the data, and then do the calculation. That's slow, okay? You cannot survive on this kind of models these days. We have affiliates in South Korea that can do everything from the point the data leaves the stock exchange to, and then the data comes into that algorithm uh, pricing engine, and then they price it, make a decision to, take, to make an order, and then the order executed and recognized back in the exchange all under one second. Okay, using the traditional architecture, you're not gonna do that. You know, it takes several seconds at best, okay? So, in a new architecture, the data is feed into the cloud directly, enriched, apply the right filters for the people who have the right authorization to see them. Enriching meaning that, okay, you can say, this is the stock code for HSBC, and then this is coming from Bloomberg, you know, add an attribute to that, and add an attribute to that of which exchange it is being traded on. So using algorithmic trading, you can scan all the pools, white pools, dark pools, what have you, okay? And persist them on the data grid. And the users just use the Excel as a viewer, okay, to update the data, I mean, to, 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 to visualize and then to, to the, the, the market data on the spreadsheet. Second, when you want, when the traders want to make a quotation to the client, you know, they don't have to run the quotation on their machines anymore. Because very often, they have 40 to 50 different models running at the same time on their machine, and that's taking a lot of time. What they do right now is they send a quotation request to the cloud. The cloud, well actually this is also, the computation service is also part of the cloud. But for cosmetic sake, I'm separating them, okay? Send this request for the computational service, get it calculated, send the result back, persist it on the cloud because somebody else, like the risk manager that I'm gonna show you, may want to know that information later on and send it back to the trader. Okay, here comes the map reduce um, piece. If a lot of the quants uh, model uh, relies on running 10 million, 20 million threads of Monte Carlo simulations, okay? And it is very natural for us to persist that onto, to transform that and uh, as a surface on the grid. So imagine you have, in the old days, even if you're running on a traditional grid, you would distribute all these you know, computational task to individual cores on the, on the grid. And that is not fast enough. The reason for that is because you, the, the system needs to be sure that there are enough resource available to you, you know, before they can actually start the computation. So imagine that you have a bucket of meat and you want to feed to a pack of hyenas. Which way is faster? You throw the meat to the hyenas or you pour the bucket on the floor, and they each come and grab it. They finish one piece, they get another piece, they get another piece. This is what the new, the, the, the meat on the floor is what the map reduce paradigm is doing, okay? Lay the computational request on the cloud. Each of the processing unit come and grab it. When they finish it, they'll come and grab another one. And then the reducer will monitor how many computation has been completed. When it sees that enough threads has been completed, it will send the result to the end user. So this is what happens, send a request to the cloud, distribute it to the different processing unit, process them, come back, and reduce it, persist it back to the cloud, send to the end user. Okay. You say, you know, can I have only three, three um, processing units? No, you, you just, like what Nandy has done, 
make an SLA, right? I want to have as many as uh, 30, 50 processing units if available to me. So they will, the system will automatically scan for available resources. If only 10 is available, they'll give you 10. When other batch processes have completed, more resources available, they'll assign more to you automatically. Mid office system integration and data backup. Okay, memory, uh, data on memory. Um, you know, it, you need a backup to the, to the mid office system for archiving. So it's easy on Giga Spaces to write a service, to send the data back to the relational database, and persistent or mid office system for other people to use the data. And fi the final piece is the risk management part. Okay, there are the traders and there are the risk managers. The risk managers need to know what the traders have done in order to decide you know, whether they can, do, they can do more and decide how much risk the organization is exposing to. So the workflow is the data make a deal, we persist that deal structure on the, um, on the cloud. The cloud has an event trigger mechanism, meaning that they will monitor the market data updating, and you can either set a threshold or an event updater when it sees that the things have changed by a certain percentage, they will submit a request for the whole hedging position to be recalculated and for all the breaches to be recalculated. The computational service do the, does the calculation, put it back on the grid, and update to the risk manager. So every time the, the risk manager will have the real time, most updated um, information on his desk. He doesn't have to make specific requests to the mid office system whenever he wants to do it anymore. Now I'm going, any questions? I'm going into the demo. On the, uh, my computer has two processors and that's why I have two processing units set up here at the bottom for the, uh, for the demo. There are three pieces to the demo. One artificial market data feed, and then the cloud, and then the Excel front end, okay? The cloud is gonna do a few things. First thing is, it has a, um, oops, sorry. This touchpad is to store the data. It has a Monte Carlo processor. It has a Monte Carlo reducer, okay? Uh, I can uh, one. Okay, actually, I press it two times. Okay. okay. So this is the Excel front end. Uh, <coughs> yes. Okay. So what it does is the market data keep feeding into the data grid. I can get snapshot of the spot price and the vol anytime I want and then I can also run the option pricing engine I'm gonna run it 10 million times okay you can see that you know it is progressing 19% 27% 39% like that okay the cool thing about this is, it is, it is just a UI, okay? So let's say, I let it run. I want to increase this number, okay? So I add another zero to the back. Okay, so they calculate the option price to be $1.41. Okay, that's good. I start another run. And then I, I go for a coffee break. I close it down, I don't even save it. Okay. And then I come back from my coffee break. And I open it. It's running, right? So you can see that this is also one aspect of the availability, okay? You don't have to worry about your desktop crashing, okay? It is just a UI, okay? Everything is automatically, you know. Once you fire up the Excel, the agent will go into the data grid, grab the new data, and tell you what is happening. 
Okay? So this is very this is a quantum leap from the life before. Um, implementation and proof of concept for CRSA in Hong Kong, Macquarie, many other major banks. And um, even in this very difficult time, um, they view this as a cost saving and performance boosting initiative. So, um, and I, I can foresee that this, this will go on and on, you know, as, as the market pick up again. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions?